Okay, it's uh, Thursday, uh, September 5th, 2019. We're picking up where we left off with our verse-by-verse -verse study in 1 Corinthians. We're in chapter 6, and we're leaving off. Uh, we left off last time. We were in chapter 5, and of course, the Apostle Paul was talking about the uh, the part where, we, of course, in verse 1, it said, It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you. And he went through the whole chapter talking about how they need to be judging. They need to be making sure that there, if there's sin in the church, they need to kick it out. And he was talking about how, in verse 11, But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, or covetous, and so on and so forth. And then uh, he said, uh, For what have I to do to judge them that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within. But them that are without God judgeth. Put away, uh, therefore put away from among yourselves that wicked person. So the Apostle Paul is going to continue on with yet, other issues within the Corinthian church explain to them they need to uh, deal with the matters that are going on with them. And so he's going to be talking about this, and uh, we'll get into this. We'll, we'll go a couple of verses, and uh, but we'll open up in a word of prayer first and go with uh, the verses that we're seeing in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. So, Lord, we're thankful for being able to understand and study your word rightly divided, to grow in the knowledge of the truth and have your word work effectually in us uh, so that we can believe uh, even more your word, uh, study it even further, and uh, we're thankful for this as uh, members of your body. Amen. So, we see in verse 6, as, as the Apostle Paul continues with his, um, uh, you know, going forth with the, with the Corinthians, he says, uh, dare any of you, having a matter uh, against another, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints. So as he's continuing to go forth with them, he's, he's talking about you know, having issues you know, one with another. Just like there was in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, there was an issue with a brother. And they needed to deal with that brother who was a saved brother, but they, his behavior was way off and they were doing nothing about it. So now as we get to verse, uh, or chapter 6, now that we're finding out that there's many people, or there's a couple people, or we don't, we don't know exactly how many, but we're seeing there any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust and not before the saints. The problem that the Apostle Paul is trying to point out to them is that uh, if, if another brother has a, an issue with another, if one saved person has another issue with another saved person, why are they going to the law to report this problem and not before the saints? If there's, uh, you can think in, in your mind of somebody who you know is a very knowledgeable, wise, saved saint who, who can uh, open up the Bible and expound many verses and put them in their proper context and rightly divide it and give it to you sound advice. So what he's saying is, why are you going to the law? Why are you going outside into the world that's, that's a, uh, uh, ignorant of the wisdom of God and unjust and it's a worldly system? And uh, why are you going to that system instead of to the saints to, so to help you solve the issues of, of what's going on, whatever it is? Why are you going, if you're having a matter against another, why are you going to law uh, before the unjust and not before the saints? Uh, because the advice they could give you could be religious advice, could be worldly advice. They could tell you whatever the whatever the matter is, whatever it could be anything. But they could tell you the solution is to go have an abortion. The solution is to go take a lot of drugs or have a divorce or something about go ahead and change your gender or go ahead and take some, you know, just reject that Bible that you have because that's what's out there. If, if you're not going to a saved individual to talk about a matter that you may have between a saint, one saint and another saint, and you go speak to someone who you know is not saved, even if it's a relative, even if it's a co-worker, even if it's you know someone else, and you talk to someone who you know is not saved, all they can give you is worldly, wrong, religious advice. And so this is what the Apostle Paul is saying here in chapter 6, verse 1. He says, dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? And this is what the Corinthians were doing. When the Corinthians had issues, they weren't going to anybody in the church. They were going out into the world to go to, say, the, the 
whatever it is, the, the, the police or, or a judge or something like that to get their matters solved. Whatever their, matter, their spiritual matters, quote unquote, were looking for a resolution. And so they're saying, how do you expect to find proper resolution when all that's out there is the unjust? They can't, they can't, you can't find justice from the unjust. So this is what the Apostle Paul is saying in uh, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 1. And so in verse 2, he says, Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? So what he's, what he's saying mainly in verse 2 is, he says, Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? So he sees, he's pretty much speaking to them saying, how come you're not judging these matters? How come you don't have anybody in your church, in your group, in your assembly, Corinthians, that are judging these matters, that are able to judge these matters, that you can go to and have judged these matters? What's going on? Where, where are these people at? How come, you know, you're doing it? And he, say, and he even says, don't you know that saints are going to judge the world? And what he's doing, there, what, what it's showing here, is he's saying in verse 2, do you not know that the saints so judge the world? What he's taking is we know that the world, the earth, is going to be judged by the kingdom saints. And we know that in heavenly places is where we go, is where we have all judgment. We know from Ephesians chapter 2, we're already seated in heavenly places. So when he talks about the saints, he's taking the concept of a kingdom saint and a uh, body of Christ saint, the concept of a saint, and the fact they have judgment. Jews have judgments over the earth. We read that from the book of Matthew and Mark and Luke and John. And how Romans through Philemon, we can see all over the place how, how the church has judgment in heavenly places. But Paul is taking the concept of saints as a whole and saying, do you not know that the saints so judge the world? So he's saying, you know, the saints in general, how you know, kingdom saints, in this case, were you to, you know, dive deeper into this, Kingdom saints are going to judge the world. They're going to judge the earth. And he's letting them, he's letting them know that concept. That, you know, if, if they've got judgment down here and we've got judgment up here, there should be judgment everywhere. Why are you going to the law for? What are you going to the unjust for, for resolution if judgment happens among the saints? So if you look at, say, Philippians chapter 1, verse 9. Uh, for example, Philippians uh, chapter 1, verse 9. And the Apostle Paul says, And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. So when it comes to love, when it comes to everything else, he's talking about how it needs to grow in knowledge and in all judgment. And so this is how uh, discernment takes place and how love will grow. It grows in knowledge and in judgment. Not through a lack of judgment, not through a lack of knowledge, but in both. When they grow, that's when your love should be growing as well in the dispensation of grace, knowledge, and in all judgment. So we see an example of that there. So as he mentions this, and as we come back to verse 2, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, he's saying, know ye, uh, Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? So they should uh, be able to do that and judge the smallest matters. So we see that there. And so if you look at uh, Ephesians chapter 1 and uh, verse 18, in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18, you see a little bit more about this as uh, Paul prays to the Ephesians, not to the Ephesians, Paul, Paul prays uh, this in Ephesians. He says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling. And what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? You know, judgments is part of that inheritance. He says, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward, who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. So you see a brief mentioning of everything there in, in Ephesians. And as you come back to verse 2, you're seeing that uh, 
are you unworthy to judge uh, the smallest matters? And then he says, verse 3, he says, Know ye not that we shall judge angels, how much more things that are uh, that pertain to this life? So, of course, he's bringing it back to the concept that saints are, are who's in charge of uh, judgment. The Lord's, of course, in charge of judgment, but uh, we see that, that that's part of the inheritance that we get we receive as members of his body or as the Jews receive as, as the kingdom saints and, and as part of judging the world. And so he says in verse 3, Know ye not that we shall judge angels? And, of course, we know this through the rebellious angels, uh, that we will be a part of judging as the church, the body of Christ. Uh, we say that there will be that as well. And, of course, you know, uh, why not? If you look at Ephesians chapter 3, going back there in verse 9. Uh, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 9. And what we see here says, to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hidden God, who created all things by Jesus Christ to the intent, that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose, which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we see from Ephesians, he's saying in verse 10 to, that the intent uh, that now unto the principalities and powers and heavenly places might be known by the church, the manifold wisdom of God. So they're already, you know, instead of uh, God didn't give to an angel the revelation of the mystery, God gave to Paul the revelation of the mystery. And we're seeing that in verse 10 of Ephesians chapter 3, that the principalities and powers and heavenly places uh, might be known by the church, the manifold wisdom of God. It's, it's, that's how it's working out today. So when it comes to that and how we would uh, judge in the ages to come, or not even the ages to come, but uh, just later on, you're seeing that everything from a rebellious angel is, uh, you know, the area or the operation of which we'll be judging. So uh, we see that from verse 3. And the point of where Paul's bringing this all back to, whether it's the kingdom saints judging the world, whether it's us judging angels, is that judgment is where it's supposed to happen in the church. And he's saying, how much more things that pertain to this life? And he says, aren't you not unworthy to judge the smallest matters in verse 2? So the, the, the Corinthians should be in full judgment mode, in other words. They should be the ones in full judgment mode being able to handle the issues of this life or be able to bring it to somebody who could handle that within the church and not going before the unjust, the worldly system that's out there, which was at this time apparently in Corinth. And so they were going according to religious systems and they were going according to worldly systems or whatever what kind of advice they were getting, you don't even know, but it was obviously affecting the church. So he says in verse 4, uh, if ye... If then ye have judgment of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge uh, who are least esteemed in the church. So as he goes on and explains this, you know, the, the judging of things in uh, this life, he says, if, if then ye have judgments of things uh, pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. And this goes back to what we saw, if you go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 28. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 28, if you remember what we studied, we saw, it says, And base things of the world, and things which are despised, hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are. So as he's talking about these judgments and everything else, he's talking about how things that are not, uh, you know, concerning these judgments, uh, should be brought to the least esteemed, to bring to uh, should bring decisions to naught through the wisdom of God. They're the ones who are going to be holding and having the wisdom of God, uh, as being the least esteemed, according to what Paul's saying in verse 4. And then he says, verse 5, he says, I speak this to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. So he's seeing in verse 5 that there's there's no there's nobody there that can even uh, judge between his brethren. And he says, I speak, I speak to your shame. He goes, where is, essentially, what he's saying in that verse is, where is this, where is everybody who's supposed to be judging in that church? He says, well, we can't even find one guy. 
He goes, and I'm speaking this to your shame, Corinthians. So he's saying, I speak to your shame. Is this so that there is not a wise man among you? And we know from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 15, it says, that he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Of course, in the Corinthian church, there was nobody spiritual. He had to speak unto the whole church as they were babes. He says, I speak to you unto babes in Christ, because there's nobody spiritual. So he's saying to them, if I have to speak to you as unto spiritual, then there's nobody there that can judge anything. So they need to bring they need to bring their issues or their, their matters to somebody who is spiritual instead of going into the worldly system, the law, the unjust. And they they didn't figure that out. They didn't know this. That's why he says, I speak this to your shame. Is this so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. So there's nobody that can judge matters between one brother and another. There's nobody there that uh, they're going to. There's no one. There's just, there's this void that uh, Paul is, is uh, you know, rebuking them for. So there's nobody spiritual in this group. There's nobody, you're all, you're all, uh, and that's why he's writing this letter to them. Uh, you know, yelling at him as, as he is. In the First Corinthians chapter 3, in verse 18, he's saying, you know, let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. And he said that before. And then in verse uh, 6, First uh, Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6, he said, And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that ye might learn us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. And of course, that's what they were. They were puffed up. They were puffed up in their own uh, minds, one against another. So they were puffed up, and they were looking at everything. They weren't going to the proper people for their matters and their issues, uh, one brother against another, for whatever issues they had. And so instead of dealing with it, they kept going to... Uh, worldly wisdom and people who thought they were wise, but they really weren't, or they were going to law one against another, and that was the wrong way to go about things as well. And so Paul's trying to redirect them, saying you need to find a, a spiritual individual who's saved, a spiritual saint, and that's where you bring all your issues to. If you have one matter against another with one brother and another, or you know, a saved individual with another saved individual, you bring it to a a, a a spiritual, you know, giant, for lack of a better word. That's where you bring your issues to. So, he says that there in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 5. But he says in verse 6, he says, um, But brother go to law with brother, and that before the unbelievers. So we know in, in uh, Paul's, Paul's not against the law of the land. Because we see, he's saying, but brother go to law uh, with another. Uh, or, I'm sorry, brother go to law with a brother. And so, you know, if we look at, say, uh, Acts chapter 22, verse uh, 25. Uh, Acts chapter 22, verse 25. Paul's not against the law of the land. Nothing wrong with that. <clears throat> In fact, what, what, he, what he says in Acts chapter 22, verse 25, he says here, And as they bound him with thongs, Paul said unto the centurion that stood by, Is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman and uncondemned? So Paul, would, when Paul was being scourged, or when Paul was being captured or whatever it was, he used the law that he knew, the law of the land, to say to the centurion, you know, hey, Is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman? And uncondemned. So for, for someone to know the law of the land is a good thing. It'll be a benefit on their behalf to know the laws of the land that you're living in. But to take one brother, uh, one saved person, one brother against another and go to the law of the land thinking that's going to solve your problems when the, the whole law of the land is not saved, that's a different matter. So to know the laws of the land to get you through a situation, if you're in a situation, that's one thing. But to go to the law of the land when you're dealing one saved person with another, you should be going, keep that amongst the church. And then uh, 
we also have, if you look at Romans chapter 13, Romans chapter 13, verse uh, 3, uh, to keep it in its proper context. The Apostle Paul uh, is all for the law of the land. He says, uh, For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Uh, do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. Uh, but if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. So this is a, uh, you know, he's talking about how it's, it's good for you know, the law of the land to be able to execute wrath or, or minister good based on what's going on. Uh, but when it comes to the church, keep it with the issues of the church. And 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 uh, you know, spiritual giants within the church, you know, bring your issues there. And he's saying this to the Corinthians, and we can learn from that. <clears throat> and he says, verse seven. He says, but uh, when he says in verse six, uh, but brother go to law with brother in that before the unbelievers. So he's saying that you know the worst part of it is that they're bringing their disputes before unbelievers instead of spiritual elders, for lack of a better word. Instead of the spiritual elders seeing what's going on amongst the church, the unbelievers are watching everything happen, and that's giving uh, that's kind of giving a bad name to the church. The unbelievers are watching everything happen. The unjust are watching everything happen, and they're making their own minds up about what's happening within the church, thinking it's it's uh, it's a mess. Instead of understanding what it's really all about. When they should be giving the gospel to the unjust, not their problems to the unjust. So, you're seeing that take place in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. But then when you get to verse uh, verse 7, he says, Now therefore there is utterly a fault among you. So he brings them up and he makes them know this. Paul is very clear to say, hey, there's a fault among you. To be Pauline is to go to someone when there is a fault and say, hey, there's a fault among you. And that's, that's being Pauline. He said, now there's utterly a fault among you, because ye go to law one with another. Why do ye not rather take wrong? Why do ye not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? So what he's, what he's essentially saying here is, uh, he says, now therefore there's utterly a fault among you, because ye go to law one with another. He says, why do ye not rather take wrong? So he's saying, instead of going to the unjust to get your matter solved, why don't you just uh, take wrong? Or why don't you not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded and then go to the spiritual saints to get your matter solved? You know, first, if, if someone does wrong, you say, I'm just, making up a, I'm just making up a situation. If someone steals your flower pot or someone steals your, your, your chair, I'm just seeing things in front of me here. Someone steals your flower pot, someone steals your chair, let them steal it, bring this matter to the spiritual saint, the, 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 the people that we know of that are in our mind, the, the, the most spiritual people we can think of who can rightly divide or do all the stuff, or, you know, you know, top of the top saints, bring the issues to them and say, what do you think I should do about this? I've seen it happen. I, you know, I, I suffered because of this. They took it. They did it. You know, in every situation, of course, is not going to be this situation. It's going to be something different. But I saw it happen. They did this. What do you think I should do? Um, or I, this is what I think I should do. What does the Bible say that I should do concerning this matter? And the spiritual saint should give some sound advice on how to handle it according to God's word rightly divided. And we're not going before the unjust, where the unjust is going to give some advice about, uh, you know, We'll say, well, don't do what the Bible says. Let's go and uh, give you some worldly advice and and uh, something where the worldly system will approve this and, uh, you know, something like that. Or I saw on the TV show where this is what they did, you know, and you just don't want to go that route. So we see that from verse 7 where Paul says, Now, therefore, there is utterly a fault among you because you go to law one with another. Why do you not rather take wrong? Why do you not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? He says, Nay, ye do. Uh, 
He says, may, may you do wrong and defraud and bat your brethren. And of course, this is where Paul's getting extremely upset. He's saying, he says, may you do wrong and defraud. He says, and bat your brethren. So when he's saying this to the Corinthians, he's saying, he's getting upset, saying, of all the people you're going to be uh, defrauding, of all the people you're going to be doing wrong to, you're doing it to your brethren. You're doing it to the church. You're not doing it to the lost. You're not doing it to the unjust or the uh, the, the worldly or, or anything else. You're doing it to the church. You're hurting the church. Of course, they remain saved, but you're hurting, you're hurting the very people that you're supposed to be edifying. You're the very people you're supposed to be working with. If you look at First Thessalonians chapter four, verse six. First uh, Thessalonians chapter four, and uh, verse six. What uh, the Apostle Paul says to the Thessalonians, he says that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, uh, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as uh, we also have forewarned you and testified. So he tells the Thessalonians uh, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter. We see that there. And then in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 25, Uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 25, he says, But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong uh, which he hath done. And there is no respect of persons. So they won't be able to say, well, you know, I, I might have done something wrong, but I'm, you know, I might have taught something wrong, I might have said something wrong, I might have did something wrong, but I'm pastor so-and-so, you can't touch me. Or I'm pastor so-and-so, or I'm whoever, or I'm whatever. There's, there's no respect of persons in the body of Christ. Whatever has occurred will be... Uh, you know, there's no respect to persons. Everything gets dealt with. So we see that through verse uh, 8, and as far as taking and doing wrong. And we're pretty much going to stop here, but we're seeing in verses 1 through 8 how, um, how the church, the Corinthian church, needs to learn this and understand this. So on top of their divisions that we've seen all the way from chapter 1, verse 1, their divisions, their issues, their problems, they're, they're needing for understanding about the, uh, the, uh, the, the judgment day of Christ, uh, taking account of everything, uh, their need for judgment, and their lack of judgment, and the fact that they go outside the church to find resolvement. Uh, Paul just keeps trying to drive their points home, saying, look, this is how things need to be dealt with. And so Paul will continue with this next time as we continue in uh, the book of 1 Corinthians. And we'll pick up on this uh, next week.